Hey everybody, it's Savage Lands News coming in this time as promised with my Pro Tour Reinar deck tech. So yes, I am going to be bringing Reinar to the Pro Tour. Am I super confident in it? Absolutely not. Um, this season is actually really, really kind of hard for Reinar in my opinion. A, it's not solved enough. So a lot of our sideboard space really has to be way too spread out as a mid-range deck to be able to deal with all of these different encountered heroes that we're going to run into. And to be honest, uh, Phi was much easier to beat than Lexi, like way easier. So the number one aggro deck right now is way worse than last season, in my opinion. And the meta is super open. So I have so many sideboard slots that are kind of like fighting for their place because you really don't know who you're going to play. These top eights have consistently been like six, seven heroes. It's really hard to tech into that, right? Especially as a mid-range deck where we really kind of... We don't set the tone of the meta. We meet the meta where it goes, right? But regardless, I'm going to do my best. I'm going to take Reinar. I'm going to try and get to day two. I'm going to try and make me some money. And, you know, maybe Jem will be very kind to me and give me a bunch of Dromais and Old Hymns and Bravos and a couple of Zuris or whatever. Or maybe, you know, I'm just going to face back-to-back -back Ranger and try. But <laughs> we'll see. So... I went all like full circle with this list. I started off with my PT list. I went really aggressive. I went really defensive. I went club. I went full, you know, whatever. I'm going to have no blocks in my deck and see if I can high roll my opponents all the way back to where I started. And so I'm pretty comfortable with my list right now. I have good games into most of the heroes. And then um, there are quite a few places and I'll highlight them on the sideboard slot that it can easily be swapped in for other cards. So let's dive into that list and uh, I'll walk you through it. See you there. All right. So it's going to look very familiar, at least from the equipment standpoint. And that's because it's identical, right? Um, I was messing with Skull Crushers a lot because that one block sometimes versus Azalea and Lexi like really equates to like three, four damage. However, the trade off of rolling a one almost always negated the block. Because in Lexi and in Azalea, you are rolling a lot, like a lot. So, you know, I, I, I did test it. Trust me. I think, you know, one of the people I've been working with, Cold Pad Tai out there, um, who we've had on the channel, you know, we and him have been going back and forth. Our lists look very similar right now for a reason. You know, I think we both reached the same conclusion. It was like rolling a one versus Lexi means you lose, you auto lose instantly, gone, right? Even Azalea, lose gave him five cards oof right so the one block just wasn't really working out yes of course there was a couple games where i rolled a five and a six and i just did multiple times of like six plus extra damage for no reason and i wasn't punished and i got the block sure yes that is true it, there were certain games where skull crushers definitely pushed me past lexi i hard rolled the crap out of them and i won but most of the time as soon as i rolled the one that advantage disappeared and i lost so I'm pretty comfortable here. You can obviously stick cold cr skull crushers in here. No big deal. Okay. No big deal. Right. But yeah, same, 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 same as last season. Crown of Providence, Fendals, Gamblers, Heart and Crosswrap, Mandible Claws, Null Rune, Scabskins, Skullhorn. You'll also notice there's no claws in this list. That's all of the equipment. Um, why no club? Because it's too slow. Uh, I tried full fatiguing. I had multiple people attempt to try and full fatigue Lexi. It's impossible. Um, if, especially once they figure out what you're doing, they're just going to pitch stack and then they're going to kill you. Old him can have barely do it. Most of the old him players I know, some of the best in the world saying that it's hard to fatigue Lexi, Reinar can't do it. Right. Especially not against players who are very skilled. Right. So club is just too slow, right? You need that one massive cheat turn. Like you need to come in for 20. You have to, otherwise you're going to lose because they're doing four, four, five, right? Every single turn with on hits. Your six isn't going to match their trade and your block nine swing four isn't going to match their trades either, especially when you have no massive turn. So this is the equipment list. Makes sense to me. You can change it if you wish, but this is where I ended up. Okay. And then the core deck is identical to where it was before with the sole exception of sand sketch plan. Okay. And you know, my fire rate on sand sketch plan is super low. So I'm still not sold. I'm not 100% sure if I'm going to keep Sand Sketch Plan or not. You know, I do like the other cards a little bit better into Bravo and stuff like that in Old Him. But Sand Sketch Plan is just another avenue for you to do a lot of damage on your first turn, whether you're going first or second. It's just an 
another card that can kind of make you get that massive first turn where you can start off with a lead and then hopefully find a blood rush fast enough for, before you lose it, right? So Savage Feast, you're going to roll for this more often than not. It is one of our power cards. Swing Big does eight. Beast Within can enable some massive turns. Blood Rush, obviously. Reincarnate can honestly swap out for the other cards if you want, but it's a blue, you know, no discard. Sorry, it's a yellow, no discard six. And Riled Up, Smash Instinct all follow that path. And then I'm on 17 blues. All right, same as I was before. You can go more. You can add more. You can go up to 20. You can go up to whatever you want, 21. Um, if you go up to 21, you have a couple more choices, like Pummel. Um, but I don't run Pummel right now. I have another list that does have it, right? You'll notice that this is stall.deck v8. I've done eight iterations of this deck. One of the Pummel lists I had was actually very successful too, but it is difficult to tell so far if Pummel really has any impact on Ranger at all because they have so much card advantage. Death Dealer, Pummel is useless, right? Uh, Ponder Run, Pummel's useless. Uh, reload on hit, Pummel, Ponder's useless, right? Or, or refill your arsenal on hit, right? All of those cards kind of make Pummel a lot less attractive. And it's two for four, which is pretty bad, right? It's only good if the card disadvantage you're giving your opponent is actually disadvantage. But if you're just spending two, two cards for four extra damage and that disadvantage didn't do anything, Pummel's pretty bad. So that's a decision you got to make, right? But I'm on 17 because right now this version doesn't have Pummel. V7 had Pummels, so I'm still going back and forth between the two, but I'm settling more on this list. All right, and here's the sideboard. Okay, Alpha Rampage has become an all-star. You're, play, you're playing a lot of old teams, a lot of them, a lot of Bravos. This card's good. Azalea gives you Red in the Ledger, Alpha Rampage for nine. Easy, right? It's just our highest damage single card. There's a lot of instances and times where this does it. It closes games. It does damage on turn one. There's a lot of reasons to run it. Same with Barraging Beatdown, same thing. Cheat damage on turn one. Uh, two for seven with your Claws, which is pretty good, right? Command and Conquer, I think, speaks for itself. Good into millions of heroes, right? Erase Face, this card could be swapped out for Humble. Uh, Humble is, I've, I obviously started with Humble instead of Erase Face in the list. It just never did what I wanted it to do. I don't know. Sometimes it works. Sometimes Humble really hurts a Ranger. Sometimes. But then there's a lot of the time where like Lexi just flips a codex or flips a, uh, you know, a buff card and it, does, it didn't do anything, right? A race face at least covers some of our other matchups like Dash, at least covers Viscerai. You know, uh, you could argue that Humble hits Briar and it kind of hits Lexi and kind of hits Azalea. So really, this card could be swapped out for basically anything you like. Race face right now is a big question mark. It is not final in my list, just so you understand. This is a question mark slot. Fate for Scene and Sink Belows. I, I've been running six into the Rangers. So three and three, right? Uh, that's more than I've ever ran before. It does make Blood Rushes more difficult to land. It does make your deck a little bit less consistent. However, it does seem to work. They do dig for blood rushes. So I run these six only into Ranger. Other than that, the max I'll ever go is uh, four, right? Like I used to. Oasis Respite. This in, this between this is between Reinforce the Line and Oasis. I just think Oasis was working out a little bit better with Tunic against Azalea. It comes in for five sometimes. Reinforce the Line when you have 30 misses can a lot of the time just do nothing in your hand like you'll just draw like barraging barraging tome or whatever whatever you have in your hand and you just can't play reinforce the line at least oasis on a reinforce or a red in the ledger turn you just it's like whatever block pay for it gain a life whatever right uh it also works in the kano which you know you may or may not see and then this again could be swapped out for basically anything else i am not solidified on the fate for scenes oasis and sink below quantities yet not at all. We're getting there, but not yet. Um, so again, this could be reinforce the line. Pack Hunt, I swapped this out multiple times for other cards. Uh, I missed it every single time I took it out of the list for Old Him and Bravo, so I put it back. Good card. Finishes games, right? Especially with all of these blues that you're pitching to the bottom that just natively intimidate. This closes games. Sigil of Solace. I don't run this in Ranger anymore. I started initially just sticking these in Arsenal because it's like anti-codex tech. But now I'm on 100% block threes in the Ranger, right? So I took these out, but they're still really good in the Guardians and other cards. That's why this one smash instinct is here is literally to make me have the ability. So one, two, three, one, 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 63 blocks. 
It's the only reason the Smash Instinct is in there, right? Same thing with Skull Crack. I was just looking for more cards that fire off Blood Rush pretty well, can help me with a three card Blood Rush against Lexi. Skull Crack came in. It's okay. I don't love it, but it sometimes gives me a, a resource, and that sometimes that resource is exactly what I needed to beat Alexi. Okay. Smash Instinct, like I said, you could bring it in versus Guardian. It's pretty good, uh, but it's mostly just to give me all three bucks. Arg Smash, we're seeing a lot of dashes recently. This came out at one point, it went back in because there's dash everywhere. Remembrance is anti Guardian tech, anti Tree Frog dash tech. You just run this in any matchup where you're probably going to want to Blood Rush four times, five times, whatever. Toma Fiendal, honestly, was one of my power cards last season, is now a giant question mark. I am unsure if I'm going to run Toma Fiendal into anybody. So, what that really means is that because the meta is so wide, I have Toma Fiendal, I'm not sure if I'm going to keep it. Arg Smash, not sure if I'm going to keep it. Oasis, not sure if I'm going to keep it. Erase Face, not sure if I'm going to keep it. These cards can come in to tech into basically whatever your local meta is or whatever your Pro Tour or major event predictions are, right? These cards can all come out and come in for something else. So that's the list. On Talishar, I have maintained an 80-something percent win rate over like, I think with this list, 30 or 40 games. My V7 list has a very similar-ish number. Um... And then, you know, all the way down to V1, right? So I've played probably over 100 and something games on Talishar. Not that that means too much, to be honest. But I've also ran a quite a few of those into my testing partners and teammates. And this is the list that I'm feeling the most comfortable on. Again, Erase Face, Toma Fiendal, Oasis Respite, the Smash Instinct, these Skull Cracks, uh, even some of these Faith for Scenes are all massive question marks. But the meta is super open, right? So, so that's the list. All right, real quick before I forget, these are the cards I am actively testing, okay? These are the ones that are floating in and out of my list right now. Skull Crushers, we talked about it in detail. It is a good way to high roll. If you're really giving up on the Ranger matchup and you just want to high roll, put these in. They can win you a game by themselves. E-Strike, this card is super good. I've always underrated this, I guess. Uh, it's in Chandler Toe's list. My testing partner is running it right now. Uh, it's coming up as a really powerful card. Two for seven is nice. Good to have more chip damage. Uh, scab skins into draw card can do some crazy things. Uh, yeah, it's just good. I mean, like with scab skins, this is a zero for five. That's nice, right? That's just nice. Humble. This will probably make it in my final list. Honestly, E Strike 2, I think. Um, but this just is interchangeable with EF, right? It depends which target, which heroes you want to target. Pulping. You want to go a little bit more aggressive? You want it to still function if it whiffs? Pulping is the right choice. Wild Ride, you know, obviously can't get shut down by a D React, but with our ratios, Pulping is safer. And into the Agra Heroes, which is probably where you're going to run it anyways, sometimes them giving you two cards is just worth it, even if it whiffs. Pummel. Uh, Pummel is either the best card or the worst card, and I'm still not really sure. Sorry. I don't, I have three days left. I'm still not super sure. But pummel lists are doing well. You saw Leviah run rainbow pummels and just kind of throw scab skins every turn and just make as much value and disruption as they possibly could. Pummel is good. Um, it just has to be, you know, it has to hurt your opponent. Otherwise, it's two for four, right? We kind of talked about that. Red, yellow, blue, you could run any number of them. Smash Instinct and Smash with Big Tree are two or sevens, right? The only difference is Smash Instinct blocks but cost three, which is bad for Blood Rush math. Smash with Big Tree costs two, but doesn't block. But this is good for Blood Rush math. Both of these cards could go in. You could honestly run all of them if you wanted. Uh, I have had versions with Big Tree and versions with Smash Instinct. I actually really like both of these cards. So there's that. Lunging Press. Not co not kidding. <laughs> I tested this one. Uh, I got it to fire way more often than I thought. I literally was only running one or two of them in each game. But CNCing with a Lunging Press with none floating when they have two cards in Arsenal and they still blocked, that's good. But it's a two block and it doesn't do anything for your end game. So there's some downsides. And then if you're going to run Pummel, you need more blues. Pack Hunt, Smash Instinct Blue. You're going to want to go up on blue quantities. So these cards are out. And I traded the, the, the Pack Hunts for Sand Sketch Plan, and I might go back. Not sure. But that's uh, the cards I'm thinking about. I'll put them in the description below also. And remember that the Rainbow Pummel, is, is it's all Pummels. I'm considering all of them. Uh, not sure which quantities and stuff, but I'm considering them all. So let's jump into that tier list or matchup spread. All right. So let's jump into kind of where I'm ranking the, the heroes. Good, 
skill luck. I have never put luck in a list before, but there's a reason for it now. And then bad. Okay. So starting off with kind of easy, right? Levia, we have a good matchup into. We do the same thing. They do slightly more damage, but at the end, when they have too much blood debt, intimidate really does matter, right? Uh, well, basically, it's a mirror match. It's a mirror match where one side can block 12 and the other side can't. Uh, so I think it's good, right? Of course you can get higher rolled. I mean, brute mirrors kind of suck. Like, you know, you could put it here in the luck category also, but I think we have a little bit of an edge. Reinar, skill slash luck, because the mirror is really, honestly, who finds blood rush. Now, my version of Reinar tends to win. However, the more aggressive Reinars can just like pop off and one shot you, right? It's possible, but I tend to win with like the D reacts and the sigils and stuff like that. So I'd say skill luck, whoever sees three blood rushes probably gets it most of the time. Azuri, the reason the luck category exists. Okay. Uh, I can't believe it, but uh, this is the only hero I play against where it truly feels like the it's, it's, it's just a coin flip, right? It doesn't, it just does Azuri banish my good cards and do they find the CNCs and the, the, the specialization like on the turn, they really shouldn't have found it. Or do they find them back to back to back? I had, you know, I've played, I've played Azuri games where I win by like 25 health against a really skilled player. Somebody I know is really strong. And then the next game I lose because they just got rid of all three blood rushes. Turn, turn, turn. Right. Um, I don't know. Uh, I think you can beat Azuri most of the time, but like if they just hit your three blood rushes and then somehow find your remember or they banish your blood rushes and you can't even remember in some back or whatever, it sucks. It sucks, right? You're really going to lean on trying to make it past all of their power cards and then like closing the game with alpha rampages and like a hopefully a deep pitched blood rush. But they can just, you know, I've, I've seen them just hit the card off the top of the list and it happened to be a blood rush. And then, you know, that happens two more times and it's like, cool right? <laughs> cool. Um, so yeah, I think this is a very 50, 50, if not a, a luck matchup to, to me dash can be both good and a little bit on the skill side, depending on the version, especially, but I think we're favored, especially with this list, the sigils, the D reacts, right? Boost dash really can't do too much to us. And then full tree frog, we have an advantage into too, because we do have a lot of intimidate naturally built into our kit tree frog dash as many d as they run, they don't block that well with a lot of those two blocks. So if they just get unlucky or they, they're stuck with an unmovable or whatever, right? We just do a lot of free damage. So I think we have a good matchup into uh, Dash. Briar, somewhere between bad and, and skill. I do have a positive win rate into Briar. Uh, Humble does help actually a bit if you want to put that in your list. So I would say it's probably something around these two tiers, but we'll put her at like the, top, the easiest of the bad category. Icelander. Luckily, this this hero is uh, gone, <laughs> basically. But uh, I've actually found recently that I've improved my Icelander matchup a lot by just not caring. Um, I used to just, I think I, def I respected them too much. Now I just kind of roll scab skins and throw all my cards at their face with Intimidates, and it's actually working out a lot better than it used to, especially because they had to adapt for the meta. So the newer versions of Icelander seem a lot easier than the old versions, if you get what I'm saying, especially after all of those nerfs, right? Bravo. I think it's a, it's a good matchup. Bravo is one of the only good matchups that you can just kind of violently lose to though, because Bravo, if they hit, you know, back to back, cripple, 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 tear us under, tear us under, tear us under, and all of those kind of like pummel C and C and all of that, if they just chain those back to back and you never get tempo, yes, it's a bad matchup. But most of the time our cards just do similar amounts of damage, but cheaper. So they have to spend three cards to do nine. We spend two to do six or two to do eight. And we blocked better and did more damage. So I think personally, Bravo is a favorite matchup for us. Although most Bravo players would say the opposite. Uh, Dorinthia is for sure uh, a skill matchup, but I think we're favored because Intimidate just makes it hard, right? We're, we're both mid-range decks. We get to choose what we block with. They tend not to, right? So that, I think that's really the only differentiation is we get to choose what we block with and they don't. And in a mid-range fair deck, that actually adds up over the course of the game a lot, right? A lot. Katsu. Uh, you could argue Katsu's pretty bad right now. Uh, you could, especially because I removed that all you got from the list. When I had it in my list, which if you think there's going to be a lot of Katsus, put it back. It's actually pretty good. Uh, it feels like Phi. 
only they take a little bit longer to get to their maximum turn, but their maximum turn is way worse. So, you, you know, you could argue that Katsu's bad. It's somewhere between skill and bad. But you're going to see the trend. Aggro heroes are going to the bottom. Kano, we're favored, especially with Oasis. Old him, we're favored, in my opinion, especially these new versions of old him that have adapted to this crazy man, ranger meta. A lot of their cards really don't target us at all anymore. They're really defensive. They're pretty slow. And, you know, that just means we get to stack blood rushes and intimidates over and over and over again until they run out of health, right? Riptide, super favored. Dromai, skill to favored. A lot of these new Dromais have figured it out. The Vincenrikai Ash is actually kind of a nightmare to deal with. Uh, so I would say it's still a skill to favored matchup. Vi, I, I think we're favored, if not, you know, skill. But I'm pretty sure I, I still have a really positive win rate in Defy. But with this new list, we lost that all you got, which does actually make a pretty big indent. Arachne favored. They just want to be defensive and we don't let them. Bolton. You know, Bolton's favored. We have a lot of non-attack actions that we can block with. Blood Rush does a lot of damage. They don't get to pick what cards they want to defend with. We're good into both the Raiden and the Centauri Sabres one because we have a decent amount of armor, a lot of non-attack action three blocks. So we're favored. Viscerai, unfavored. Probably the worst. We are. This is the worst of all of the original heroes. Hard to beat. Um, Rune Chance just don't let you block the way you want to block. It's difficult matchup. And then we're going to talk about Azalea. I don't have a full consensus on Azalea yet. Uh, a lot of my games are kind of dictated based on if I draw my blood rushes fast enough or if they do one of those 21 damage arrows fast enough or they back to back run the ledger, right? But I do have a positive win rate into Azalea so far. Uh, I think this can go both ways, skill slash luck. And then the final champion, which I will make a new tier list for. Let's Let's come right back. So down here at the very bottom is a new category I'd like to call Codex is Stupid. <laughs> Lexi is a abysmal matchup. Um, they just, they do everything these aggro decks do, right? They do a lot of damage, but they have on hits the entire game. And depending on the, the but depending on when they draw them, it can be the most nightmarish thing in the world to deal with, right? If they just like triple turn drill shot, your equipment's gone by turn three because you were forced to use it. They can randomly give you frostbites, so they have disruption. Uh, they have one for sevens with infecting shots. Codex is really the only reason that I can't seem to beat good I, uh, Lexis, right? Because we can, we can with this list, you can kind of get them down pretty low, right? We can both be like 10, 10, 3, 3, something along those lines, like very low. And typically that's where I would lock my opponent into defending with two cards and intimidating a card, right? I call it Reinar locking, right? You you send you, you spend two cards, you do six. They have to spend two plus cards to defend six, right? And then and and that's it. But Lexi is all three blocks practically now. And the crazy thing is, is her card advantage is so high that you can't lock her, right? In a couple turns, she'll find a codex. She'll force a card into your arsenal. You lose some of your block value. That card might be unplayable. It could be the inertia token. It could be whatever, right? And then she gets a ponder and suddenly, you know, you're keeping her down to two cards, two cards, two cards, codex. She has three cards. And now she's attack, attack, attack. And you just got, you just got pivoted in, in one card, one card pivoted the whole matchup. And so it's really impossible to deal with, right? There is no, there's no locking her at a low health threshold anymore. Um, and that's honestly how I won so many of my Ryan R games was locking my opponents at low life thresholds and then outvaluing them there. But it's impossible. Um, so good Lexi players will will you know they outrace you, and then when you lock them, they out they they unlock themselves. And she also has a lot of power cards, right? She has rain razors. She has three of a kinds. She has codexes. She has uh, the plunder runs, ponder runs. So she's gonna find her power cards faster than you too, because three oaks also draw three cards. So there's been there have been several games where Alexi fired all of her rain razors and all of her three oaks by the time I found my first blood rush. Then that's impossible. Now you can win. I have a positive win rate into Talishar Lexi so far, which again I don't think that means that much. But 
you can win. It just requires that your gambler's glove or your scavskins hit. It requires that your blood rushes do 20 damage and it, requ- and it requires you probably to find two of them before they like rain razors three Yoku three times. And that's a tall order, right? It's a tall order to always hit on your gambler's gloves. It's a tall order to find all of your blood rushes very fast. It is possible. I do have a positive win rate again, but into my teammates, I do not have a positive win rate. So I'm going to put Lexi in a tier of her own. I believe she is the most oppressive aggro deck to ever touch this game, probably next to Starvo, but she is only a percent of the meta and she's not converting very well. So let's just hope that that carries us through gem. So once again, really the, the reason Reinar is a decent choice right now is you'll see Bravo, the uh, old him, Dromai in the good tier, Lexi or Azalea kind of in like the myth tier, Azuri in the skill slash luck matchup tier. Katsu's not the worst, but it's not great. And Lexi is pretty bad. So quite a few of the best, the most popular best heroes right now are in the favored slash luck skill category. And it's really only Lexi that we're struggling into right now. So that's that. That's my pro tour list. Like I said before, come find me at pro tour. We can grab a beer together. We can talk. I'll get, I might have some some goodies on me and, uh, you know, I hope to get some pictures, have a great time, and I would love to see you guys there. Hopefully not across from me, but I'd love to see you. Have a great day. I'll see you around.